in this video, we are going to look at the further integration rules. Now, these are the additional uh, integration rules that we need to know if we are studying the IB Math Applications and Interpretations course, the AI HL course, and this is inside of Topic 5 Calculus, Integral Calculus. Okay, so for a little bit of revision here to start off, what we should hopefully know by now from the uh, basics of integration and, and anti-differentiation, if we have the integral of, let's say, 3x squared with respect to x, and we want to find this integral, well, we need to firstly identify, is this a definite integral or an indefinite integral? And it depends if we have little numbers at the top and bottom here of our integral sign. So this here is an indefinite integral. There are no numbers at the bottom and top. So our answer will be another function. So what our answer is, is let's use our integrating uh, technique for uh, x to the power of something. What we do is we raise this power by one. So we add one to the power and we divide by the new power. Now this coefficient here, three, that does stay there. So it's going to become 3x to the power of 3. We've added 1 to the power. We need to divide our x by the new power, which is 3. And then we need to put our plus c. The plus c is our integrating constant. It's a very important step here. We always need to remember to put a plus c if it's an indefinite integral. Okay, and we can simplify this. The 3 will cancel out with the 3, and we're simply left with x cubed plus c. And this would be our indefinite integral. We can always check if we did this correctly by taking the derivative of this. We should get back to our original term here. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and the derivative of a constant is 0. Now, what we could have also uh, have been asked is the definite integral... I'm going to say from 1 to 2 of 3x squared, and this will give us a different answer. The integrating step is the same. The integral of 3x squared will become x cubed, uh, but we don't need to put the plus c if we have little numbers here. If we have an indefinite integral, we want to put a square bracket. Let's put our integral answer, which is x cubed, which is the same step as what we had up here, but then we need to put the 2 and the 1 up here and down here, and we need to actually substitute in the 2 to where x is, and we will get 2 cubed, and then we need to subtract away, and we substitute in the 1, so it'll be 1 cubed, and we will get 8 minus 1, which is 7, and hopefully you know what that 7 actually represents. This 7, the definite integral answer here, will be the area under the 3x squared curve, between 1 and 2 for x. Okay, so this is all of our revision. So what we want to do now is uh, look at some of our further standard integral rules for HL, and I'm only going to look at all of these as indefinite integrals. So we know we can apply these limit, this limit step here to find the definite integral. Okay, so let me clear my screen. Okay, so now we have a nice blank screen. Now, I will just preface that all of the rules that I'm about to go through here, they are in fact just the exact opposite of the differentiation rules uh, for the equivalent terms here. Because we should hopefully know by now, if we have something and we take, let's say we have something here, we take the derivative of it, we will get the derivative. If we find the integral of that, we should go back to our original term. So all of these integral rules are in fact the exact opposite of our derivative rules. Okay, so the first one here, this is, this is an interesting one. The integral of 1 on x with respect to x is equal to, and the integral of 1 on x actually is whatever the number is on the top, which is 1, so let's put a 1 here, multiplied by the natural log of the absolute value of whatever is on our denominator, which in this case here is x. Let's put an x here. And then we divide this by the derivative of what was on our denominator. And the derivative of x is just 1. And we will have 1, and then we need to put a plus c. Now, I have a few unnecessary ones here because we know that we don't need to have 1 multiplied by something or, or we don't need to put it over 1. So this is, in fact, just equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And that's what you can see up here in our 
formula booklet, uh, but I showed you the ones because uh, we might need to use our knowledge of that integral uh, for maybe more difficult integrals, and I'll show you one more. Let's say we had the integral of five over three x minus one with respect to x. Okay, so using the same technique, whatever, our, whatever is on our numerator, which in this case five, this will stay on our numerator for our answer. We'll have five multiplied by the natural log of the absolute value of what was on our denominator, which will be three x minus one. And we need to divide this by whatever the derivative of our denominator was, which will be three. And then we put our plus c. Okay, so that's our integral. That's how we integrate our terms that look like this. And all right, I think we can move on to the second and third. So let me clear the screen. Okay, so now let's have a look at the integral of sine of x and cos of x. And I like to, uh, I like to draw that circle here of sine goes to cos, which goes to negative sine, which goes to negative cos, which goes back to sine. This was the differentiation circle that I drew uh, back in the further differentiation rules video. And if we go clockwise, if we follow the arrows, we can find the derivative. So the derivative of sine is cos, the derivative of cos is negative sine, and so on, so on. So if we're now finding the integrals, we just go the opposite way. We will go anti-clockwise. And therefore the integral of a cos term will become a positive sine term. And we can see that here, the integral of cos of x with respect to x is equal to sine of x plus c. And likewise here, the integral of sine of x will go to negative cos of x plus c. Okay, so if we remember the circle for differentiation, we just go the other way. Now, I will just show you a few quick examples. Let's say we had, uh, let me do one example, the integral of, let's say, 4 multiplied by cos of 2x with respect to x. Okay, so if I'm finding the integral of this, uh, what I do is the 4 stays out the front, so it's going to be 4. The integral of a cos uh, term will become a positive sine term. So let's put 4 times sine, whatever's inside of our bracket stays the same, it'll be 2x. But if we are integrating a trig function, a sine or a cos uh, function, uh, what we need to do is we need to look at what's inside of our bracket and we want to take the derivative of what's inside of our bracket, which in this case will be 2, and that needs to go on our denominator. It's going to be over 2. And maybe you will recognize there that that is the exact opposite step to when we took the derivative of these terms. When we took the derivative, that the, de not, the derivative of this went out the front as the numerator. So now when we're integrating, we need to do the opposite. It goes on the denominator. So we would need to put plus C, and then once we simplify the four and the two, we will get two multiplied by sine of two of X plus C. And we know that is correct because if we wanted to take the derivative of this, sine will become cos, the two will come out, it will become four cos of two X, which is what we have up here. Okay, so that's these two rules here. I'll quickly touch upon this one here. The integral of one over cos squared of x is equal to 10 of x plus c. Uh, this is a bit of a tricky uh, proof, this one here. We don't actually need to prove this anywhere in this course. Uh, but if you did watch the video for further differentiation, we will remember that if we have a function f of x equaling 10 of x, we can rewrite 10 of x as sine of x over cos of x. And then if we applied the quotient rule, we found that the derivative was one over cos squared of x. So we can notice that we can just do the opposite. The integral of one over cos squared of x will equal 10x. And that's where this formula here comes from. Okay, but I will touch upon this last one here. So let me clear my screen again. If I want to find the integral of e to the power of x with respect to x, it is actually equal to e to the power of x plus c. Uh, let's do a little bit of revision. What we, what, we, uh, what we learnt from our previous video for differentiation, if we had, for example, f of x is equal to e to the power of, uh, let's say, 3x, if I wanted to find the derivative of our function, it would become 3e to the 3x. 
and that's because the derivative of the power came out the front. Now, when we're integrating, we do the exact opposite. The derivative of the power goes on the denominator. So, for example, if I wanted to find the integral of uh, e to the power of 3x with respect to x, it will become e to the 3x over 3 plus c. Okay, so if we're taking the derivative of an, a function that looks like this, the derivative of the power comes out the front, but if we're finding the integral, it goes on the denominator. Okay, and one more rule that I'm going to add to this video that's not actually in our formula booklet is the, I like to call it the anti-chain rule. It's the opposite to the chain rule. So let me just revise the chain rule. Let's say we had a function f of x was equal to bracket 2x plus 1 to the power of 5. Well, let's remember our differentiation rules. If we wanted to find the derivative of this, let's say we wanted to find the derivative using the chain rule, the 5 came out the front. It will become 5 multiplied by 2x plus 1. We reduced the power by 1. The 5 became a 4. And then we multiplied our answer by the derivative of what was inside of our bracket, which would be the 2. And therefore, we would get 10 multiplied by 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. So this was the chain rule. I'm going to do the anti-chain rule, which is the exact opposite uh, steps here. I'm going to say, well, I want to find the integral of 10 multiplied by 2x plus 1 to the power of 4 with respect to x. And if I'm finding the integral of this, let's hope that I get this as the answer. Okay, so using the anti-chain rule, what we do is we raise the power by 1, we divide by the new power, so we're going to have the 10 still, it will become 2x plus 1 to the power of 5, we divide by the new power, which is 5, and on the denominator, we multiply it by the derivative of what was inside of the bracket, which would be 2. We have our plus c, and what we can hopefully notice is that we have 10 on the numerator, cancelling that with 10, and we simply get 2x plus 1 to the power of 5 plus c. Okay, so I like to call this the anti-chain rule, uh, but well done if you followed all of those steps. Uh, we have our standard integrals here, which are just the opposite of all of our standard derivatives. Uh, these are the integrals that we will need to know for the AI HL course, and I've also added the, the anti-chain rule here, which is another one of our integration rules. Okay, there are a few more integration rules, which I will touch upon in future videos, like integration by substitution, but these are the standard ones here. Okay, good luck.